everyone. Welcome to my channel, Government Jobs in Your Pocket. Today, we are going to discuss about the topic, Structure of Atoms. So, we will focus on all important points required to pass various job-oriented exams. So before discussing about atoms, let's go through the laws of chemical combination developed by the scientists Lavoisier and Joseph L. Proust. So, this law of chemical combination actually consists of two parts, law of conservation of mass and law of constant proportions. So, these laws actually tells, tell us about the effects of a chemical reaction to an element or a chemical. That is, what happens to a chemical during a chemical reaction. So, first one is law of conservation of mass. It states that mass can neither be created nor be destroyed in a chemical reaction. So, be it any chemical reaction, the mass of a substance cannot be created, cannot be destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. That is, it can only be converted to another form. It cannot be destroyed and nothing new is created. And second one is law of constant proportions. It is also known as law of definite proportions. So, here, for example, um, we have uh, water. That is H2O. Uh, it is a compound of two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. So, you take any source of water or any amount of water. The ratio of mass of hydrogen to that of oxygen will always be the same. It will be a constant. Same as the case for any chemical substance. So, the law of constant proportion states that in a chemical substance, the elements are always present in definite proportions by mass. So, what is an atom? It is the smallest particle of a chemical element that can exist. So, the definition and properties of an atom is described using Dalton's atomic theory. So, this theory is actually derived from the law of chemical combination. So, according to this theory, all matter, whether it's an element, a compound or a mixture, is composed of small particles called atoms. And these atoms are the one which participate in chemical reactions. Next, atoms are indivisible particles, which means atoms cannot be further divided. And atoms of a given element are identical in mass and chemical properties. But atoms of different elements have different masses and they have different chemical nature and also. Next, Atoms combine to form compounds and they combine in the ratio of small whole numbers. Also, in a given compound, the relative number and kinds of atoms are constant in a given compound. For example, atoms of uh, hydrogen and oxygen combine in a fixed ratio to form the compound water. And water always contain a constant number of both hydrogen and oxygen atoms. But later on, after various experiments, it was proved that atoms are not indivisible and it consists of charged particles. So, they were electrons and protons. So, electrons were discovered by J.J. Thomson in the year 1900 and it was represented as E-. minus. Proton was discovered by the scientist E. Goldstein in the year 1886 and this Proton has charge equal in magnitude that of electron but was opposite in sign. So, the charge of electron is minus 1 and that of proton is plus 1. The mass of an electron is considered to be negligible while proton's mass is 2000 times as that of electron. So, an atom is composed of proton and electron mutually balancing their charges. Now, the discovery of these charged particles led to the proposal of various atomic models. First one was the model by J.J. Thomson, Thomson's model of an atom. This model was similar to that of a Christmas pudding. The electrons were like dry fruits in a positive sphere of Christmas pudding. This model proposed that an atom consists of a positively charged sphere and the electrons are embedded in it. And the negative and positive charges are equal in magnitude. So, the atom as a whole is electrically neutral. But this model had some 
drawbacks as it was not able to explain all aspects of different experiments on atom. So, next came the Ernest Rutherford's model of atom. For this, he conducted an experiment by making fast moving alpha particles to fall on a thin gold foil. Alpha particles are actually doubly charged helium ions. This alpha particle scattering experiment concluded that most of the space inside the atom is empty because most of the alpha particles passed through the gold foil without getting deflected. Very few particles were deflected from their path indicating that the positive charge of the atom occupies very little space. So based on this experiment, Rutherford's model of atom was made which stated that there is a positively charged center in an atom and called it the nucleus. Nearly all the mass of an atom resides in the nucleus. Next, the electrons revolve around the nucleus in circular paths and the size of the nucleus is very small as compared to the size of the atom. But the main drawback of Rutherford's model was that the revolution of electron in a circular orbit because this may lead to acceleration of electrons that can cause energy to be radiated from these electrons. This will cause electrons to lose energy and finally fall into the nucleus. Hence, atoms become unstable. So, in order to overcome these objections, Niels Bohr proposed a model of atom which states that only certain special orbits known as discrete orbits of electrons are allowed inside the atom. And while revolving in discrete orbits, the electrons do not radiate energy. These orbits or shells are called energy levels. And they are represented by the letters K, L, M, N, etc or numbers like n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. How the electrons are distributed in different orbits or shells will be discussed in another session. So there was also one more subatomic particle discovered named as neutrons. Neutrons were discovered by the scientist J. Chadwick in the year 1932. This subatomic particle had no charge and has a mass nearly equal to that of a proton. Neutrons are present in the nucleus of all atoms except hydrogen. Also, an important formula for mass of an atom was given that is mass of an atom is given by the sum of the masses of proton and neutrons present in the nucleus. So that was about structure of an atom. We will have a separate session on distribution of electrons in orbits or shells, then atomic mass, valence, the atomic number, etc. So hope you all enjoyed the session. Please like, share and subscribe my channel for more videos. Thank you.